So hello again everybody out there uh, in YouTube world. Uh, welcome to Evion Electronics episode 2. Uh, sorry, episode 3. Um, today I'm just going to talk about one of my hobbies. Uh, I am a hobbyist um, radio enthusiast, let's call it that. My very first job I was actually a radio communications technician um, for a few local companies. Um, I drift, drifted around between the few in the early days, uh, qualifying as a communications bench technician, installations, maintenance technician and various other things. Uh, but I've always had an interest in citizen band radio, ham radio and the likes from a very young age um, due to a friend of mine's father who was uh, quite an avid ham operator. So it brings back some good memories. But um, yeah, we used to scavenge uh, old TVs, hi-fis and stuff from the rubbish dumps, restore them and then actually sell them to make some pocket money. Worked out quite well. But going back to citizen band radio, I still operate on citizen band radio here in South Africa. Um, I have various radios um, in my presence uh, for monitoring ham frequencies and various other things as well as HF band. Um, I operate mostly on 27 upper sideband here in Durban, South Africa. Uh, but we also do have a, um, a need for certain sort of expertise in the game. Uh, one of those things that's been very much lacking is new power mics or microphones with built-in power amplifiers or pre-amplifiers per se. Um, you used to get very good ones like the Aesthetics, uh, the Lisons and stuff. I actually use a Lison desk mic on my um, President home base um, and then me, my other radio uses a mixing desk similar to the one on top here um, with a commercial studio condenser electric microphone on a boom arm at home uh, for communications. Um, this mix over here will possibly be connected to this radio over here at a later stage but that's for another day. Right now I was looking at how do we pre-amplify a microphone or create a basic power mic um, to sensitize the microphone elements a little bit more so we can get a little bit more out of it. We don't have to eat the microphone per se. Um, right now I, on this breadboard I have a single stage NPN transistor driven microphone preamplifier. Um, off my leader audio test over here right now, I'll give you guys close ups in a minute. I am generating a voltage, um, an AC audio signal I should say at one kilo oh, sorry let me just up that to one kilohertz right now it should be one kilohertz or close enough to um, you can actually see the one kilohertz waveform here on the oscilloscope um, there we generating well 995 hertz so close enough to one kilohertz um, if we just go to measure we can see we've got 995 hertz, uh, we've got 160 millivolts me, uh, mean, uh, peak to peak is 3.10 volts. That does not make sense at all, but um, who am I to argue? We should have, let's just increase this a little bit. I'm going to input around 0. Point, oh, that's possibly too much there right so we've got our input over there um, as you can all see uh, let's just close that off right so what we're doing now is we're generating the the signal into the um, unit let's just hit this button right so we've got peak to peak of 5.08 volts, which is actually quite a lot. Um, let's reduce that to a very small signal, sort of what a microphone might produce. AC couple that limit on to clean it up a little bit and we're on a times one probe right so get the trigger up there right as you can see here now there is our signal um, 20 millivolts per division so 40 plus 40 so we've got 80 80 millivolts peak to peak at the moment on there 
um, which isn't a lot. It's actually a little bit more than a microphone would drive, but um, just for argument's sake, let's just have a look at it. So that is our input at 80 millivolts peak to peak, which is more or less tying up with us over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to the output of this little single stage amplifier and um, let's see what we're getting over there. Right, as you can see, um, it's completely off the scale. Sorry, a bit of a bad connection over there. So what we need to actually do is we need to go up to a, a higher scale. We have some clipping over there, so let's just... Let's reduce the input a little bit. Now bearing in mind, being a single stage amplifier, this unit will actually invert. Need to go much lower down the scale here. Okay. Right, we have our AC waveform. Ah, there we go, bit of a bad connection. Let's just reduce that input a little bit so we get a nice clean sine wave. Okay, so now to do a comparison. We're now outputting 200, so 40 millivolts on the input. We've got 400 millivolts on the output, which is more than enough to drive any citizen band radio. And the waveform does look pretty clean and it is variable. I mean, there we go at 400 millivolts uh, peak to peak, 600 and so on and so forth. Um, we can possibly even Bring this down a little bit more to one volt per division. So we've got one volt peak to peak, two volts peak to peak, two and a half, nearly three volts peak to peak. Uh, yeah, possibly three volts peak to peak over there. So it, it's got quite a bit of drive. Uh, I would suggest presetting a limit on this in some way. Uh, but as you can see, now that 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 is your output from this unit. Now I'm going to take my probe and I'm going to probe the input and you possibly won't even see the signal, it's so small you'll have to dial your voltage range down quite a lot before you'd start getting your waveform in there. So yeah, that's 20 millivolts peak to peak, just over 20 millivolts peak to peak input. And it's thumping out a nice strong signal. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm working on here, but bearing in mind, like I say, being a single stage, um, I am thinking of adding a second stage one of these little guys over here, these are, what are they, General BC547 MPN transistors. Um, they work quite well for the audio range. Um, I can also reduce a bit of the distortion by doing that. But for now, right there what you see is quite a simple little amplifier. So I'm now going to share some of the images up on the screen with you of the basic circuit diagram for this, uh, how it works, and um, talk you through it in the electronics format uh, on the computer. So I'll see you guys there. Okay, what we're looking at here is the primary input and output for the single stage BC547 audio amplifier. 
Now if you look at it, we've got two inputs. This input here is for an electric condenser microphone and this input here is for the dynamic. So for most parts we'll make use of this input over here. The capacitor on the input of the base of the transistor is just to block out any DC. Um, so what will happen is it will allow AC to pass through from the dynamic microphone um, altering obviously the base. The transistor is biased so we just turned on um, therefore it is going to amplify the full cycle not just half of it or the positive peak cycles or whatever. The resistors and capacitors I'm not going to go into all of it in detail but basically they are there for various reasons uh, from uh, uh, limiting current, uh, biasing the transistor, etc. Then we've got another capacitor over here. By the way, this this section over here is basically just for powering the condenser electrode. So if you're not doing the whole condenser electrode microphone, you can drop these capacitors and this resistor over here without any problem. But these resistors are required for biasing of the transistor. Um, this again will block your, your, your DC from coming out here, so you'll get a pure AC signal. Um, which will then go across this resistor over here. This resistor over here sets your output impedance of the circuit. Um, at the moment I've got a 5k in there. Uh, not too detrimental with these things but just bear this in mind is this is going to preset your output impedance and it's also going to set your level out from this audio stage um, either to into the next stage or directly into your rig depending on which way you want to set it up. So very simply put this is your schematic diagram of uh, the amplifier that I've just shown on the breadboard. It is working 100%. It is available on the internet. It's not my design. I have stolen it, but then why reinvent the wheel? Um, I am, however, improving it as I go with values, and I will be changing a few more of these values soon uh, to get a better impedance match. Um, most of the dynamic microphone inserts are around 600 ohm, and I'd like to get a 600 ohm output. But obviously, again, this may change. Um, maybe we need a voltage divider sort of setup over here, but we'll see as we go, um, as the design improves. Right now, I am adding a second stage, uh, which I will talk about more in the next video. But for now, this is what we have.